you'd like to upgrade your injection confidence quickly, it starts with upgrading your anatomy. So that's what I thought I'd cover in the show. Let's do muscular anatomy of the face. So we'll start from the top and work our way down the face. The first muscle is therefore the frontalis, sometimes called the occipitofrontalis because it often has a connection that runs all the way from the occipital bone all the way through to the brow ridge. This muscle is involved in elevating the eyebrows and there's often a component of pulling the forehead down towards it as well. We treat it with botulinum toxin to get rid of horizontal forehead lines and also to lift the eyebrows in certain instances. The next muscle we'll go to is the procerus muscle. This is part of the corrugator complex or the glabella complex and this muscle pulls down. So it pulls the forehead downwards and creates a horizontal line on your nose. That's the most common reason you might treat it in isolation is because it helps get rid of a line across your nose and is sometimes used as part of a non-surgical rhinoplasty. The next muscle is your corrugator supercilii. This muscle is the one predominantly responsible for the elevenses lines. This muscle starts on the bone just above your nose and runs to the dermis of your skin and pulls the skin inwards, causing that little crease. And this is the main muscle used to frown. So we inject this muscle because it's the main muscle that causes the angry expression or elevenses on your forehead. So you look more relaxed and happier and less wrinkly if you stop that muscle from moving quite as much. The next little muscle is the depressor supercilii, which crosses the corrugator muscle and is often considered simply a little branch of orbicularis oculi, but it does contribute to frowning and we usually treat it alongside the glabella complex without even having to think about it because it is so meshed in with the corrugator supercilii. So we inject it really as part of the frown line treatment and a way maybe of causing a small lift to the medial brow. The next muscle is the orbicularis oculi muscle, the most superficial muscle in this area. It lies on top of the others and is most involved with causing lateral canthal lines. But of course, it's also involved with narrowing of the eyes. So if you close your eyes tight, it's orbicularis oculi that's doing that. It pulls the eyebrows down, it pulls the cheeks up, and it creates wrinkles around your eyes, which means when you relax this muscle with botulinum toxin, you get the opposite of those effects. You may get a little lift to your eyebrow, you may reduce the lateral canthal lines, and it can be a side effect that your cheek is less elevated during smiling, which is often not desired, but worth knowing about because that's how that muscle works. The next muscle as we work down the face is the zygomaticus major muscle. This is the primary muscle involved with smiling and elevating the corners of the mouth and pulling the cheeks up. It's very rare to inject it for cosmetic reasons unless someone for whatever reason had a very strong muscle that was causing too much contractility. Normally it's a muscle we try and avoid because we want the smile to be active. Medial to that we have the zygomaticus minor which is more of a lip elevator. So medial and inferior to the zygomaticus minor is the levator labii superioris. This is a lip elevator, lifts the lip up. We don't purposefully inject it very often but it can be injected as part of a gummy smile. Medial still to that is the longest named muscle in the body, the levator labii superioris alequinasi. And this muscle is involved also with directly elevating the lip and also the snarl expression, so pulling on your nostril, that one. So this muscle is most commonly treated specifically to stop its elevation so that the gums do not show during a smile uh, with an injection just lateral to the nostril. The next muscle medially in the face is the orbicularis oris muscle. This is embryologically four muscles that come together and form what looks to the untrained eye like a sphincter type muscle, but it really isn't. Uh, this muscle is involved in contracting the upper and the lower lip, so it narrows the mouth. And of course, with speech and expression, whistling, all those sorts of things that you can control. We often inject it to reduce some of the superficial muscle fiber strength if someone has upper lip lines or lower lip lines. And increasingly, it is also used to add some degree of augmentation to the lip with the so-called lip flip. So one of the theories with the lip flip is that you're relaxing the muscle where it inserts into the vermilion border, which makes that part of the lip bigger you may get a slight increase in resting tone in the muscle that's superior to that, which is effectively what a pout looks like. Contracting higher up and relaxing lower down, it gets that pout effect. Very subtle, but it can work in some people. Now we're on to the lip depressors. So this starts laterally with the depressor angularis oris. So this muscle pulls down the corner of the mouth and is treated specifically to cause the opposite effect. As you get older, lost fat, and lost resistance to movement can result in a downturned mouth. And if you relax that muscle, the opposite can occur. We put a roughly two units into each muscle for a small lift to the corners of the mouth. Medial and deep to that is the depressor labii muscle. Now this muscle is involved in pulling the lip outwards. Um, certain people have quite a strong muscle. I always think of Cherie Blair, who 
famously had quite a strong lateral pull and you'd see all of her lower teeth when she was smiling. That's a strong depressor labii muscle. Medial to that, we have the mentalis muscle. The mentalis muscle pulls the chin up. It starts on the bone in the middle of the chin and then its fibers go down and meet at the point of the chin where you can often see them where they cause that little indentation, sometimes called like an ice pick shape or a, an orange peel effect on the skin. And this is just the muscle fibers pulling the skin inwards, which is one of the reasons why you might treat this muscle. You may put up to four to six units in to reduce the texturing on the chin, but also to help the chin lower down so that the chin remains the low point of the face. Remember, that's one of the cores of beauty is a heart-shaped face where the chin is the low point and a botulinum toxin treatment in the mentalis muscle can aid that strategy. The next muscle we never really treat with botulinum toxin, but it's worth knowing about, which is your buccinator muscle. This muscle runs on the deepest surface of your cheek and above it is a fat pad, but this muscle is Two interesting things I know about it. Firstly, it's the strongest muscle in a baby's body because it's used for sucking, uh, for breastfeeding uh, or sucking in a bottle. And also because it is used in bugle players, particularly it's sometimes called the, what's it called again, David? It's, it's literally just called the bugle muscle. Okay. Sometimes called the bugle muscle I discovered today, thanks to my researcher, David. <laughs> Next muscle is on the other side of the fat pad above the buccinator muscle, and it's your rhizorius muscle. This muscle is interesting because its origin is actually the surface of the master muscle, and it contributes to smiling. The main reason we come across it in medical aesthetics is actually as a side effect of treating the master muscle. We accidentally relax the rhizorius muscle, and it affects the smile of a patient who wants a jawline slimming, but instead got a reduction in their smile, which is not a nice side effect at all, and it comes from hitting the origin of the rhizorius muscle just where it attaches to the master muscle. You see this muscle most active in faces during a really good laugh. When all the muscles are contracting and pulling sideways, you'll see the rhizorius muscle. The master muscle is our next muscle. So this muscle obviously runs from your zygoma. It's involved in biting, the strongest muscle during contraction uh, when you bite. And you can actually feel this muscle very clearly when you bite and you'll see it push out laterally, which is a nice test to do if you're trying to shrink that muscle, you'll see exactly where the most lateral point of it is. If we're trying to narrow the face, that's often where you're aiming. The master muscle treated when we want to shrink the size of that muscle, when you want to create a more heart-shaped face, typically in a female, or in someone with a hypertrophic master that's causing a facial shape that's just less than ideal, then you shrink it down with injections right into the apex of that muscle. Treating the master is also sometimes used for people who have bruxism, so if you're unintentionally contracting the muscle often during the night and cause, causing headaches then reducing the strength of the master muscle with injections here can sometimes solve that problem and we also have another muscle nearby which is the temporalis muscle and we don't tend to treat temporalis muscle but it's one of the muscles that help you chew and is also one of those that you can see in the face when you bite down you'll often see contraction in this area of that muscle um, just like you would at the with the master at the same time. The next muscle is the nasalis. The nasalis muscle is responsible for causing little lines on the nose, often called bunny lines, and you can treat that with two to four units each side quite safely. I don't tend to chase it down into the face where it inserts, but just near its origin on the bone. The final muscle is the platysma muscle, which is a very interesting muscle because it runs all the way from your chest all the way up and then meshes with the smas in the face. So when you relax the muscle in the neck, it can have, in some cases, an unexpected benefit of lifting the mid face. It's subtle, but I do believe there is a small chance that that works in some patients. Um, but it also will help you get more definition around the jawline. And it can help you soften vertical lines that develop the strands of muscle that you can see in the neck sometimes are improved by relaxing them with botulinum toxin. So it's quite a high dose muscle. We're using up to 80 units sometimes to relax that whole sheet of muscle, but it does have multiple benefits in the face. If you find that helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can ring the notification bell and you will automatically be served more similar content from YouTube.